Okay, so good afternoon. Uh, a very warm welcome to today's webinar. Um, we're looking at using online tools for assessment and feedback. I'm Claire Buckler, Director of Learning Commons here at DHSB. And today I'm just hosting this session, which is going to showcase some of the online tools that we use here for assessment and feedback. I'm really excited to introduce the colleagues today, and they're gonna show you some tried and tested tools and some systems that really work in the classroom. It's worth noting that while these are brilliant for being COVID secure, these are not reactionary short-term fixes that we've come up with. They're systems that we have in place and we use day in, day out, and they work within their own right. We really appreciate you taking the time to join us today. So we're gonna to aim to keep it short, to the point, and hopefully really relevant to teaching and learning. We're all busy teachers, and so hopefully we've planned a session that's relevant and centers just around us sharing our experiences with you, hopefully showing how you can use these in your own classrooms. And we're also gonna provide some resources for you to take away to help with any implementation in your own settings. Okay. So just a little bit of housekeeping before we move on. Um, the meeting is being recorded, so please could you ensure your microphones are off? That way we can get the best sound quality as possible. Um, it's completely up to you whether you have the web cameras on or off. There's no requirement for us to check that you're there. There is a chat facility with Google Meet. Um, so could I ask that if you have any questions throughout these presentations that you put them in the chat? I'm going to monitor those throughout the, ses the sessions. And if those qu questions are relevant to everybody, then I can ask them at the end of um, each presenter's turn. Um, I can also reply via email. I am aware that um, Google Meet um, chats and the Q&A isn't available to everybody. So if you want to ask a question, please do email me. It's claire.buckler at dhsb.org. I'm going to monitor that channel throughout this presentation. The recording will be sent to you through, um, after this session and the takeouts and all of the presentations will also be sent as well. Um, finally, this session is part of our role as an EdTech demonstrator school. We're helping schools and colleagues support um, or giving them support for remote education. We're funded by the Department for Education as part of its Get Help with Technology initiative. This is all free and should you or your school require any further help or assistance, please do sign up via the website here and you can select Devonport High School for Boys as someone that you want to connect with. Right, so with us today, I have Dan and Gemma. They're going to talk you through marking using Google rubrics. These will not only save you time, but also they provide students with clear assessment criteria. Paul Scott is here to showcase his work on electronic exercise books, a brilliant way to track progress, but particularly so in COVID times. And Morris Quinlan, who has been busy working on reducing workloads by using visualizers and recording verbal feedback in the classroom. So first up, we have Dan and Gemma. These guys are going to talk you through Google rubrics and a way of easy marking. I'm hoping that Dan will be able to share his screen. Brilliant. Thanks, Dan. Great. OK, thank you very much. Um, hi, I'm Dan Orsop. I'm the um, head of economics at DHSB. And myself and Gemma have been working on um, developing the use of rubrics in Google Classroom this year. Um, the idea being that it can massively ease the marking workload and also hopefully create independent learners and um, ultimately get better results. So we're going to start off, um, I think Gemma's going to go first and talk about her experience with it. Thank you, Dan. Um, yeah, my name is Gemma. I'm um, a teacher of business here at DHSB, uh, just to introduce myself. Now, um, well, I'll be honest, I was a little bit sceptical at the start of using Rubrik. Um, I'm completely new to it. Um, I used the opportunity in lockdown one to, to try it out and see whether it would suit me. Um, I am totally converted in the use of this tool. So this is a tool um, which you can assign um, assessment to any task on Google Classroom. And it's a really quick and easy way to mark work. So um, I've just got a few points here of things that I found really useful during 
um, the time of developing my skill of using rubric. Um, obviously, as a department in COVID times, we are definitely converting more to uh, digitalization of especially key stage three. Um, and Paul will talk about that in a bit more detail and a bit more. But um, obviously, there's no faff with um, paper and so on. So it's it's really easy and it's all online. Um, it's relatively quick and easy to do. It does take a little bit of time um, to set up, but once it's set up, it's there forever. So you can link it to other um, classes within the year group. So there's consistency within the cohort um, and you can use them year on year. So once they are set up, they are there forever. So really handy um, with easing that workload. Um, also, I found, I mean, I'm focusing mainly on key stage three, whereas Dan will look at key stage four and five in a minute. Um, I found that when I was writing the rubrics, it made me think about, like, to be quite a reflective um, practitioner and think about how to assess the um, work. So especially for year and eight, eight, seven and eight, sorry, I'll show you an example in a minute. It made me think about how I was going to mark the work, telling them and ultimately producing better, better learning. Um, it's really time efficient. So like I said, once it's all set up, it can your, your work, work marking work can be really quick. Um, so for example, I had a class of 30 year sevens. They were all doing a leaflet. It literally took me about 30 minutes to mark. So um, that is a massive benefit of using this tool. Um, also, not only um, is it, does it save time, it really helps me in providing useful feedback. So especially for key stage three, I'd find myself just repeating my comments in my marking. So, you know, um, good present, you know, good leaflet, what have you. Um, but actually, because I'd taken the time to think about how I was marking um, the assessment or the piece of work, I was able to give some more valuable feedback and then they were able to work on it. So um, it was a really nice, it, it's a really nice process to, to do. And then um, another point, I, I always think it's a really nice thing to do um, after like a peer assessment activity, just to give some formal um, feedback. If I could just go on to the next slide, please, Dan, thank you. Um, so this is an example of what a rubric would look like. Um, so it's all on the classroom and it's essentially creating building blocks of how you might assess um, a piece of work. So obviously you've got the title there of what it was. So this was for key stage three. I split it up into three or four main criteria, described how um, the student could meet that criteria and then split it into marks. So it was just out of three marks. So it's essentially looking at their work, it's a click of a button and then it tallies up all of their marks um, so no faff with having to work out um, the total mark. And also what's really handy, um, sir, if you could move on for me, thank you, um, is it's really visual as well. So again, this is what the students could see. This is what I can see whilst I'm marking my work. As you can see, it's all online. So it's really simple and easy to do. So I could, obviously I've, I've would have remembered the descriptors, but I literally just click on, on a block and then tally up those marks. Next slide, please, sir. Um, and then another great thing about it is I don't have to then convert all of that information into a data sheet. I can, um, I've got it all there done for me. So again, another way of saving time. And it's really simple. You can clearly see if any work is missing and um, you can see who's done really well, who hasn't um, and so on. And that will stay there. Um, for the whole time I have that class. So a really amazing tool. And like I said before, it took me a while to get used to it. I was a little bit hesitant, I'll be honest, but I am totally converted now and use this very frequently. So not only does it help me, it really help, helps the student. I think that's it, sir, for me. So sir, yeah, sir's now gonna look at the key stage four, five, as opposed to key stage three. Thank you. Brilliant, thank you very much, Gemma. Um, yeah. We think that with Rubric, it really works across the key stages um, and you can use it differently and you can get different benefits from using it with different levels of student. One of the key consistent things that we find is really useful is the fact that you've actually got a record of every single test or question that students do. Um, quite often with books, if the books get wet or they lose their books, that you might, you might have, they might have lost some feedback that you've given them. With a rubric, you have that record at, at all times, as does, as does the student. Um, we really like the fact that the markbooks update automatically because 
one of the things that is frustrating once you've done your marking is actually tallying it all up and it takes the extra 20, 30 minutes to tally it all up and put it into the mark book. And you don't have to worry about that when using a rubric. Um, particularly at key stage four and five, the students really begin analyzing where their marks come from. And you see some that, um, that really get into it and begin not, well, sometimes challenging, but actually when they're challenging on the basis of where, how can I get this extra mark? It becomes really good because they're thinking about how they, what their next steps are to improve. Um, you'll see some examples in a minute of students that actually use the rubric. Um, this wasn't my idea, they just began doing it, but they began ticking off using the rubric because they can actually see how the work is going to be marked while they're attempting it, which acts as a scaffold to help them develop better exam technique. Um, they really do begin to understand how to improve and it can be really straightforward to set up, um, depending on what you want to use it for. Um, but certainly at A level, we use a lot of leveled marking in economics where we're marking, um, say, a 25 mark question just on, on different levels. And there's level descriptors that are given by the exam board. I can literally just copy them, paste those straight into a rubric and then mark the students at the levels. They really understand what, what, they're, what level they're working at and what needs to be done to reach the next level. Um, they don't take me very long to set up anymore. The first time I did it, it did take me a bit of time, but actually they don't really take me very long at all, like minutes to set up a rubric. Um, and then once we've done it, they're completely reusable. So I really like the fact that, that we're gonna be able to reuse them year after year. We've set up in our department like a, a model classroom where we can share the rubrics. And it saves a huge amount of time from sticking out other mark schemes. And like when people sometimes, um, cut out a rubric to say what level people are marking at and then get the students to stick it into their books. We don't have any of that because the feedback is online, it's all automatic. So it saves marking time and it saves that sort of um, faff of, of gluing and sticking stuff in. Not that we can give out glue sticks anymore at the moment. Um, so this is an example. Um, for business studies, this is what we've done to build up on three mark questions. Three mark questions are the um, they make up 20% of the overall GCSE for business studies. It's really important students get it. And we can give, give them a rubric like this, and it tells them what, where they're getting their marks from. If they get two marks out of three, they're able to see that they've made a valid point and got one link, but they're missing a second link. When students begin asking questions, I did put this link in, sir. We can explain either why they haven't, or they can begin thinking about how to develop an extra link. Um, when they get their mark, they're no longer just getting a mark. Their mark is directly linked to what they've done on their um, on their question. Um, this is the example of how one of my my sit formers used it. And he gets really clinical on his exam technique. So it's pretty small, but up at the top you can see there's marks awarded for knowledge, one mark for application, and three marks for analysis. And I've put a bit of a descriptor saying how they can achieve those marks in the rubric. Um, and then this student has actually analyzed his own work and highlighted where he should be getting the marks. It, it made it incredibly easy for me to mark um, because he was spot on with it. But actually students that, um, students that do struggle can actually begin seeing what they need to do to, to get those extra marks. And over on this right-hand side of the screen, again, you can see for me, I click whether they've hit the knowledge mark, the application, and whether they've got one, two, or three for the analysis marks, and it goes straight in. But what I like is, is the students taking ownership and, and becoming clinical about how to improve their performance. This is the example I was talking about with regards to level descriptors. Um, this would be for a 15 mark question. Um, and there's basically, there's nine marks that would be available for knowledge application and analysis and up to six marks for evaluation. Um, we often struggle with students forgetting to evaluate. Um, this makes it really clear that they're missing six marks for evaluation if they if they forget to evaluate. And very quickly, we found that students then begin realizing they have to evaluate because they can see this. This doesn't help them answer the question. This isn't giving them, although they can see it when they're, um, when they're attempting the answer, it doesn't give them the answers. It just shows them what they need to do. And um, they, they really begin to understand what level they're at. When marking it, you don't have to give them. If I click the level two box, it, it automatically puts it at six marks, but I've got the choice of changing that for any mark between four and six. 
And similarly, if I click level three, it's not just giving them nine points. I can do anything between seven and nine points, depending on quite where they are on that level. So you do get the flexibility to mark like you normally would. So why would you use rubrics? Easy to set up, really easy to mark, like really, really quick and easy to mark. And you get instant markbook updates. All mark work is accessible by students and teachers. It's really consistent across all classes. We save a lot of time and students actually become engaged with the mark schemes. Um, and, and how are you going to use it? If, you, if you're interested in it, the best bet is to have a go. Um, set up one rubric for a written answer, post it to classroom with an assignment. You can mark it by clicking it and we're going to provide you some exemplar rubrics of how to use them. And that's it. Thank you very much. That's brilliant. Thank you, Dan. Um, we don't have any questions for you uh, at the moment, but do feel free to put anything in the to, uh, into the chat or into the Q&A that I've set up for you. OK, so next up we have Paul. Paul's going to talk you through um, electronic exercise books, which he's set up across the department today. So hopefully Paul will be able to share his screen with you now. Thank you, Paul. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Paul Scott. I'm the head of computer science here at Devonport High School for Boys. I'm going to talk to you today about uh, our solution for a COVID safe, uh, paper free exercise book. So at the beginning of the year, there was lots of talk about having to leave books for three days or not being able to touch them for, for that amount of time. And we wanted to find a way to make sure students got their feedback uh, in a timely manner. So I started to think, how could we work with Google Classroom to set more assignments, which would be fine, but we wanted a document that would kind of show off their work and almost like an e-portfolio. So we started to develop um, what has now become the electronic exercise book, which is essentially a Google slide um, document, um, which looks like a book. So they all have similar covers that the boys would be used to, all the students would be used to from other lessons. Uh, they fill in all the details on the front. Um, there's different colors for different departments. And if you look on the left, you'll see that each page just shows up like a normal slide. So you're able to track what they're doing and it's chronological and it's all there and it can't be lost. So if they accidentally delete something, it's always gonna be recoverable because it's in Google. You can also do this if you have Microsoft PowerPoint or OneNote, it, the same concepts will, will apply. Uh, there's all the different colors we've, we've designed, but you can decide what you want for your departments or for your different subjects and put your own logo and branding on there. Um, once we'd started making the book, we decided actually we need to have different options for the pages. So it's all very well having a plain page, but actually it didn't work for um, everything. So we created uh, different page layouts and we have things like Cornell notes, we have lined pages, we have graph pages, we have square pages so they can draw graphs and it really helped them to make that link that this is an exercise book and they were able to um, contribute to it. Uh, one of the things that we found really useful was that students who prefer to read off a certain color they might have um, they might not need to have higher contrast they might need to have bigger fonts or, or more legible fonts they can change all of those settings uh, and you can change them remotely which made it really easy for you to make sure that they were differentiated for every student um, and I found that that was really useful for students who perhaps had blue paper or pink paper um, so that's the, that's the book the structure of the book but then what we realized is actually we can have a bit of magic which was amazing and when it came to marking there are different ways to do it. You can have a dialogue with the students using just the comments, which worked quite well for a while. And then we realized actually they need a bit more. So we used the uh, speaker notes box at the bottom of each slide as an op opportunity to give feedback. And then we realized that actually we can just talk. And we found a way to talk to the computer using the, the um, type talking. And you literally talk to your laptop and it will type out all of your marking uh, in it would look like handwriting at the bottom, which was quite nice. One thing we also found is that students who had misconceptions, you can insert YouTube videos directly into the slide to help them understand anything that they might have misunderstood. So it gave them real interactive feedback. So when you do your voice typing, you literally just went to tools voice type your speaker notes and just talk and it would type for you. So the feedback was really quick to do. You could mark an entire set of class books in 
less than an hour, which was really efficient. And it was really dedicated to that student and it was on the specific page. And it just, it made it really much more like a useful exercise book for us. Um, the other thing they can do is they can collaborate. So if they've done some really good work, they can show it to their friends or they can show it to you. And because it's in Google Classroom, you have access to it all the time. It's live and you're able to put it on the board and show other people their work. You can live mark during the lesson and just type feedback straight into them. And it really was a, a great way to have interactive learning. Um, the other good thing, of course, is that it's free as well as being COVID free. And we are a paper free department. So it's really gone in our favor this year and made that really good. Um, if you have handouts that you want to give to the students, you can create your own pages, put them onto Classroom, and all they do then is copy and paste them directly in. So you don't have to worry about them trying to create things. It's all there and you can just provide it to them, which saves an awful lot of time. And they get their updates immediately via email. Okay, so I think that covers all of it. Um, bye. So, thank you, Paul. Thank you, Claire. Thank you. Just with you. Um, I'm a huge fan uh, of the electronic exercise book, and I just have to add that um, Paul did a lot of we in there, but it was actually, it's all Paul. He's done it, and he's been um, amazing. And the fact that we can roll it out so we know that every teacher in the department has the same exercise book. So for our year sevens, and eight, for example, they all have the same format. Um, in a previous position, I had seven non-specialist teachers working and, and teaching um, computer science for Key Stage 3. So a resource like that is actually phenomenal to make sure you've got that consistency. So um, thank you, Paul. I'm very excited about that, even though I know about it already. Um, and finally, I'm hoping that Morris is, is with us and is able to present on his work on verbal feedback in the classroom. Morris, are you there? Yeah. Brilliant. So Morris is going to share his screen with you. Um, again, feel free to ask any questions on the chat or in comments. I haven't had any yet. I assume everyone is is happy. Fantastic. Thank you, Morris. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about um, sharing verbal feedback with Google, um, something that I've tried doing in 2019. and um, students liked it uh, rather than writing uh, in their books I tried to record verbal feedback and share it with them and the, the secret behind it was finding a recorder a voice recorder which would share to which would share to uh, Google Drive so, and that was called Chrome MP3 recorder so Let's hopefully bring that up. And there it is MP recorder. Now, okay, well, I you can find it on Google. What I'm going to do is I've got it already downloaded here. So I'm just going to put it into here. Yeah. yeah, Chrome MP3 recorder, which is this here. Okay, so what this does is it records your voice and Go again, and I can record the, uh, my comments and save it onto um, a, a MP3 file, which I then share with the students, and I can share that into Google Drive. So um, it's this simple. If I take the students' books or a piece of work, um, and I want to just make a comment, I click on here, and starts recording and I can say, you know, well done for what you've been doing in class. I've noticed you've been working really well recently. Um, and looking at your books, I can see that you've, uh, the last piece of work that you did was excellent. And, but what I'd like you to do is to maybe complete a graph or write a conclusion and give them some feedback, which would only, which will be detailed enough, but only last for maybe 30 seconds or so. Sorry. So Morris, would you be able to share your screen again, please? I, I can't yeah, yeah. screen anymore. Thank you. Hold on. You seem to have a, a separate webcam, which is showing uh, you and not your screen. And um, what we can do if it's a problem is obviously we can record this section and just add it on the end um, okay. and give you access to what classroom looks like. Okay. Do you want me to carry on, Claire? 
Um, do you want to just talk everyone through how easy it's been for you and, and the class, and then we can um, show the classroom thing. We can send okay. that out at a later date. Is that all right? Yeah, sure. So basically, Chrome MP3 recorder records um, the voice, and you can save that onto your Google Drive, share it on your Google Drive, and place it into either a private comment or class comments. If you're doing um, more than one question, if you, if you want to go over a number of questions, you can record your comments for each question and then um, save those links into Keep. And once you've saved them into Keep, you can then copy all of the links straight into uh, Google Classroom and it's really quite easy, uh, usually. So I'll, I'll record it, Claire, tomorrow and we can post that out. <laughs> So um, what we'll do is we'll give you Morris's his work and we'll send that out to you separately. But he's worked really hard on this and actually found a way to, you know, record feedback and, and mark books so that the students can actually watch videos back as well and actually see the mark the work being marked. So it's kind of like a hybrid between books um, and the digital version. So apologies for that. We will. Um, send that out. Um, Adam's pointed out in the chat that um, Kazina or Kazena was um, one that you could use. I think you tried that one, Morris, didn't you? Did you have success with that one? Not so. Yeah, I, I tried that, but it, I think Chrome MP3 is better. It's designed by a modern um, language, language teacher, and it's perfect for the job because it it's simple and it's um, quick, and you can use it on your phone even as there's work if you wanted to. Uh, use your phone to give instant feedback and um, yeah, it's much easier. Thanks, Morris. Okay, so um, that was short and sweet and, and hopefully um, of some relevance to you. And what we will do for um, everything that we've talked about today, we will email that to you along with the um, recording for this. And we will add on uh, Morris's screen so he can actually talk you through um, doing verbal feedback with the visualizer um, if you're interested in that one as well. And this will all come out automatically because you've all registered. Um, I'm happy to hang around if anyone's got any specific questions at all for um, the next half an hour or so. So feel free just to drop a note into the chat. And do remember that if you or your school would like access to any of the free support for moving online or just becoming proficient users of um, education technology, then just go to the link here, register for help. You can select Devonport High School for Boys and someone will be in touch. Uh, I do hope that was helpful for you. Um, thank you so much. Um, and I hope you can apply those tips in your own classroom. Um, I'd love to hear what you've been up to. Uh, keep well and uh, we'll look forward to seeing you in another webinar. Thank you. And thank you to everyone that presented today.